Hey guys, so let's take a look at this video here. Yeah, so this is the part of stable diffusion. <clears throat> uh, using a couple of extensions called the forum, we are able to create something just out of text. So here if we see, Tiny, cute, swamp bunny, highly detailed, intricate, ultra HD, blah, blah, blah. Anthromorphic, clean cat, fractals. So if you see how it morphs after a bunny into cat, you'll be amazed. Right? So it is so succinct and nicely morphed. The third one is beautiful coconut. And the fourth one is beautiful durian. I think it does a pretty good job of morphing all of these elements together and make one single video out of this. So if you wanted to create something like this, so continue watching the video. So in this tutorial, we're gonna take a look at how to install Stable Diffusion Web UI along with different extensions such as the Deforum, which also needs control net. So, and how we can write some prompts that will generate something as this. Uh, do keep in mind that this takes a lot of time to get generated. Uh, this seven second video, or it's just a couple of frames that come together to form this video, right? So this seven second uh, video that uh, got stitched took, took about 10 to 12 minutes. So yeah, it does take a lot of time. Um, this, uh, I'm running a M1 Mac. So this is M1 Pro 16 GB. So it takes quite some time on this. So if you have, um, if you have a better compute, uh, it should be really good. Uh, however, we get started on how to get started <laughs> with installing the stable diffusion. Now, if we come to this link, I'll put this link in the description below. However, you, if you Google out uh, automatic triple one, sorry, one, 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 we get this page and then get down from here and see, I'm install. I'm going to show how you can install on this on Apple Silicon. However, if you have Windows uh, and or a uh, Linux, it's pretty straightforward. It's easier on those two. Uh, here we'll see the installation guide. So if you click on this link, they'll sh uh, it'll give you a lot of um, prerequisites that you need to get uh, to get started. Uh, obviously, if you're at this point, I, I am going to assume you have Brew. If not, go ahead and install that. It's pretty simple. So if you open this Brew documentation. Uh, just copy this and paste this on your terminal. I have already done that. And after you've done that, just copy this brew install command and paste this in your terminal. So let me just open up my terminal. Yeah, so if you, oops. I'm gonna copy that and paste this in my terminal. So it's gonna take some time. Yeah, but since I've already installed it, it was pretty quick. Uh, however, if you have, this is the first time you're installing, it's going to take some time. Now, what you should do is, now you have to git clone this repository, right? So if you git clone, I've already done that, uh, but just to, I'm going to, and into stable diff, I'm going to paste this here, git clone command. So once you've cloned it, it should be there. Now, what you should do is place the stable diffusion model checkpoints. I have uh, experimented with 2, 2.1, and also 1.5. I don't know, for some reason, uh, using the deforum uh, extension, for some reason, the output of the 1.5 is better compared to the 2. So if you take a look at this, the um, so if you come here, open this, this was what was generated by 2.1. So quickly taking a look, the prompt was same, but, uh, you see, it's just fractals and fractals. Obviously we can see the cat here somewhere. Yeah. This, this point we can make out of the cat, but it's not really as good as the 1.5 stable diffusion checkpoint. So, uh, feel free to try it out and experiment with different checkpoint models. I will show you how to install these different checkpoints. 
So once that is done, so here they've given the uh, download uh, checkpoint. So click on this, it should uh, prompt you, I have it. However, if you're downloading the Stable Diffusion 2.1, you can click on that. This will download the checkpoint or the model. And also you have to make sure to come, uh, sorry, to option, hold option key and click on click here. All right, so this will download a YAML file, which is YAML. The only thing that you have to take care is when you click on that, it says V2 inference dash V, right? So instead of that, what you should rename it to is the model that you're using. For instance, you downloaded uh, the stable diffusion 2.1, which has this name. So all you have to do is instead of that V2 inference dash V, you have to rename it to the model name, which is V2 1768 EMA pruned. That's it. So keep the extension as YAML, don't change the extension. So once that is done, once you have both of those files, what you should do is open up your find, uh, oops, open up your finder. Right, so once that's done, open up your finder. Now, this is the base, uh, the repository that you cloned. Once you are inside that repository, go to models and we are doing stable diffusion. And here it says, put the stable diffusion checkpoints here. Right, yeah, so put the stable diffusion checkpoints here. So whatever you've downloaded, the 2.1 or 1.5 or whatever, put that here along with the YAML file as well. So just to reiterate, make sure to rename that YAML to the same as your model name, keeping, uh, and don't change the extension. That's it. However, for the 1.5 version of the checkpoint, you don't need to download the YAML. Uh, this uh, the script that will be running will automatically take care for that of that. So now we have that out of the way. We have installed Brew. Uh, we installed all the CMA commands. Although uh, one thing I forgot is if you're uh, using yes, we'll also be using what is that? Uh, the forum. So let me quickly diff. Uh, oops. So go to this deforum. Yeah, so this is the deforum uh, extension, stable diffusion dif extension. So I will show you how to install it. Once you've inst uh, once you have all that in place, open up your terminal of choice, and then I'm gonna close this for now. Okay. So once you're inside the base uh, repository a uh, directory, all you have to do is webui.sh. Now this will go ahead and install all the dependencies, requirements and whatnot. The first run will take some time. So give it some time, do not rush it through. However, um, continuing on, it will be quicker. So once that is done, it'll give you a localhost URL that you can run it on. So, well, yeah. So it'll, it'll pretty much be like this. So once you're in this stage, uh, congratulations, you have installed Stable Diffusion Web UI. However, we want to install an extension to this. So go to extensions uh, column and in the available column of the extension, click on load from, do not change the URL, just click on load from and here click on the forum. Uh, let me, or just we can do a uh, control F. Yes, the forum, D E F. Let me move my thing here. I guess maybe since I have already installed the extension, it's probably not showing. Not really sure why. Because it's only showing this one occurrence. So Yeah, so you, the idea is you should be able to find the deforum extension here and just click on install. Click on install that deforum extension. So if, if you, if re, if we go ahead and check out the deforum extension, um, maybe I control that. Yes, so this is the one. <coughs> I will obviously put all of the links down below. So this is the one, this is the extension that you need to use. There are two ways to do this. The one way, the first way is how I showed you. However, there's another way. You can come to the extension tab, click on install from URL. Now, once we are in this uh, this um, 
repository all you have to do is just uh, copy the git repository and paste that here and then click on install this one will not work because i've already installed it okay it says installed i'm not sure how anyway so this should technically work once you've installed the deforum okay so there are two deforums huh okay so you see now i click on this it, it is not opening that one okay cool so it's only going to open that so there is some yeah there are, i think i've installed multiple instances of the same so don't do it don't do it like me however i don't think it's a problem uh, just to show you guys so if you're doing it for the first time you should be fine good to go uh, all right now coming into prompts before you create your first text to speak uh, text to image it will ask for you to install a control net extension as well so again going to the new tab um i'll also put the link down for the control net so this is the control net extension so th what this will do is it will try to generate an image uh, very specific to one that has been generated already so prior uh, image that gets generated so the next image that gets that will get generated will be very close match to the first image that got generated so this will be really effective and uh, useful when we're trying trying to make text to image uh, like an animation kind of thing so this if we take a look at it again you see that so how are how are these images maintaining the succinctness between the 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 first image and the second image is via control net so these models are uh, trained very well to maintain uh, the specifics of a particular image when it is generating another image so i think that should make sense so once we have that out of the way so we have what we have installed the stable diffusion web ui we've installed the forum and we've also installed control net and once all of that is taken care <coughs> um you can Yes, just keep an eye out for your terminal just in case if there is any issues you'll be first to catch it yeah and also i just forgot now once you've installed all of that before you start generating the video or the text to image what you should do is uh, go to the settings tab go to stable diffusion and go all the way to the bottom and then enable this upcast cross attention layer to float 32 especially if you're working on a mac uh, i i think it does not support the half floating precision so what this will do is it will try to upcast all of the half floating that is fp16 to fp32 so and then it will not uh, end up in an error or at least not a runtime error so once all of that is taken care of you can go back to the deforum and then go back to the prompt now here i would like to talk a bit of about the prompt and a few important uh, arguments so here we say maximum frame that needs to get generated is 120 and can dance is number of um, in between frames that will not be directly diffused so keep this to default i've tried but if you kind of know what you're doing feel free to explore also let me know in the comment section below if you guys want uh, complete detail explaining as to what exactly all of these um, arguments are doing but keeping it to default i've seen it work pretty well but this one, if you change, it will change the length of the video that gets generated. So 120 frames got me about seven seconds. Uh, so if you <clears throat> want probably like a 15 second, 20 second video, you have to change this, play around with this. Okay. <clears throat> now I want to talk about the prompt itself. Now prompt is nothing but a JSON file, which has the, the frame number and prompt or the text, right? The next frame number and the text. So what is exactly happening here is from zero to 30 frames, give me what I've, what I told here. So it should be a tiny, cute swamp bunny, highly detailed, intricate, blah, blah, blah. So that is what you should be generating from zero frame to 30th frame. And from the 30th frame and so on till the 60th frame, right? I want these to be generated. So on and so forth from 60th to 90th, I want a beautiful coconut. And from the 90th to 120, I want a beautiful durian, right? So I hope uh, you get the idea. <clears throat> now, what we could do is you could probably use ChatGPT to generate these kind of prompts. And then you could ask ChatGPT itself to say, hey, uh, give me the output in the form of a JSON where the key is zero and the value is the prompt itself. I mean, the key is the frame number starting from zero and the value is the prompt. 
and generate so such and such uh, such prompts and the frame number still how many hour frames you have set here 120 right also keep in mind now if you have multiple uh, checkpoints that you have loaded for instance if you are using 2.1 that is uh, especially trained on 768 so make sure to increase the width and the height to 768 here 68 eight and 768 so that makes sure the model does not i mean model generates what it was trying to generate right so keep that in mind <clears throat> and once that is done you are pretty much good to go go to prompts i i like the stable 1.5 so i'm gonna use that and of course i'm not gonna change the width to <clears throat> i'm gonna reset it back so if you forget your typical uh, values for your arguments right you could just do a reload con uh, command r it will get back to what was the initial state so going back to the forum so it was 512 512 cool and then go back to prompts feel free to generate whatever you want and then once you click on generate right so here's where your computer your macbook will go crazy so depending on your uh, specification this is gonna take time so yeah it took me about seven uh, I mean 10 to 12 minutes to generate something like this you see it gets generated and this also will give the part to the folder where the files get generated now for every time you generate the image it creates a new folder and it starts generating and then finally at the end it will generate an mp4 that we can watch let me just drag that here so yeah and probably you can add some music to this which would be again ai generated and you can just make video out of nothing <laughs> right uh, a bunch of prompts that also you can use chat gpt um, it's really the it's we're just limited by a creativity at the, a creativity at this point so if you have any more queries and doubts uh, please feel free and uh, drop them in the comment section i will try to answer them and yeah one more thing is um, here there are two things if you can see uh, here it says prompts negative prompts positive so what prompts negative does is it tries to eliminate any of the things that we include here so if we say nsfw that is not safe for work or nude or some things that we don't want the model to generate will be going in prompts negative it could be not just this it could be something that you explicitly don't want the model to generate maybe you don't want a cat looking like a i don't know <laughs> you want the cat looking very cute you don't want a cat with no fur and whatever right whatever um uh, you have you could put that there prompts negative and prompts positive uh, is something that you aid to generate the images about so you could say cute right something like that so instead of saying cute here you can say cute here so that makes sure that cute comes everywhere and tries to generate something uh, especially if you're generating an animal or a human or whatever uh, the cute will be uh, put into it and so that the model will generate something pretty good uh yeah so that's pretty much it for this tutorial uh, if you're interested to know more about the intricate details of all of these what they're doing uh you can you can let me know i'll make probably another video on that uh so that you guys can completely around with and make some videos from ai so that's uh, what, what an exciting time to be alive right all right guys so if you have any questions quit uh please let me know so till then stay in the loop thank you